not too long of a show. So if you got a spare hour and a half, that's about what we're looking at for a runtime tonight. Three guests. Our guests tonight are uh, someone out of Grand Rapids, good friend of mine, radio DJ host. Uh, his name's Christian Hoffer. It goes by Choff. He's going to talk about the radio industry, what it's like to be on the radio, and how the industry is going, as well as his uh, perception on live streaming and how he's getting into it. Uh, we also have Devin. You can see her right there. She is a, a VIP going for her top edge, someone who has done very well. There is Mr. Choff. All right, Mr. Choff, you go and hold tight. We'll go and stay. We'll go ahead and wait there for a sec. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, uh, I'll be honest. I went and I got a haircut today. I went to sleep. Someone called me and I thought I had missed the show. I had this panic attack. Thank you for thank you for that. I, I had a legit. I woke up. I was like, <gasps> I thought I thought it was like nine a.m. I thought it was like close to nine a.m. The next day, I thought it was like seven. So I was like, it's seven a.m. What happened? Because it's dark out at seven a.m. It's dark out at seven p.m. right now, and I was like, and I fell asleep in my coat. I was in full pants, everything, just like like a log, just laying there on my bed, uh, and uh, so we're we're surviving. Thank you, Shelly, for that. All right, app announcements, everyone. So as you know, the uh, Meet Me Sweepstakes has wrapped up. Uh, or is it? Yes, has wrapped up. Um, the uh, grand prize being the two Jeeps, as well as the four trips to Florida, thousands and thousands of dollars in just diamond gift prizes. Those winners will be randomly selected by a third party company and uh, announced sometime soon. I don't know. Playlist is next week. Might have something to do with that. Maybe sometime around. I don't have any official word. All speculation. All speculating there. Don't take. Don't. Don't listen to me. Don't, don't listen. To me. All right. Yeah. What does this guy know? What does he know? All right. Besides that, what else do we have going on? We have a new contest, and it's a uh, it's a neat one. It's one that's giving back. It's the Brotherhood and Sisterhood Week contest. All right. So it's going on for one week. Everyone. They're paying out the top sixteen. Top place again. Eight hundred thousand diamonds for first place pan all the way down to 16th place which is 40k that's half of a cash flow right there that's it's hundred dollars hundred dollars right there boom 40k um this is going through uh from february 21st to february 24th go ahead and read the top banner for um for details but this is again being the most gifted uh very cool mimi's always getting creative though with the types of contests and how they're affiliating um so go and check it out uh they are doing it with um nope that was a different contest all right so anyway there's that uh playlist is coming up next week everyone can you believe it? it's already been one year uh they've been hyping up the pool party they've been hyping up all the different events this this year is going to be bigger and crazier than ever i'll be doing a special edition of suited up next week i will not have my glasses on i will have been no that's not that's not the change up i will i will be in normal normal chris not chris not glasses mode chris but i will probably have some live interviews with some of your favorite top streamers who will be at playlists because we'll already be at playlists together. Get ready for all the crazy things that are going to happen. You may have seen some of the antics that we got in during VidCon. There's that surprise pieing. We had uh, lightning round interviews. We had Daddy J making a mess of things. Uh, it's it, it was insane. It was so much fun. Cannot wait to see what it's like this year. All right, on that note. I don't want to hold up the show too much this week. Let's just go ahead and pop right into things, get it going. His first guest, brand spanking new to the app, a gentleman that I know personally, and he's uh, he's pretty good at talking, so we're going to have him do it himself. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome our very first guest tonight, the one, the only, the legendary, Mr. Chuff. Hey, yo, hey. <laughs> <laughs> my, I even wore my, uh, my sport coat for this. Did I come dressed properly? Dude, it's, this is a fly look. Everyone knows you, the t-shirt sport coat combo is, is it no, it's the flyest of looks. It's number Sam one. <laughs> Sam, repping the Samasara family. We'll, we'll hey. have to talk about that at some point. Yeah, <laughs> okay. yeah baby. Uh, probably the most qualified person to ever introduce themselves that I've had on the show. Oh, wow. Well, You're very good at lot. You're very good at this part. You'd have to do it every day. So take it away. Who, who are you? 
So my name is Christian. I am an all-around, very passionate, smile enthusiast of a human. Um, for my professional life, I, uh, I do radio. So I'm a radio host on a radio station in Montreal. Done a lot of radio around Michigan, too. If we got any Michigan fam in here, what up? Um, I've done stuff with a couple stations in Detroit, West Michigan, um, so I stay super busy with that. I'm also a live event and club DJ and host. So uh, I host a lot of fun, awesome events with really cool artists. And uh, I stay super busy. I stay super in love with what I'm doing. Um, very passionate. Uh, yeah, I see we got some Michigan fam in here. What's up? What's up? Um, so, uh, yeah, that's basically the bit about me. I also ride skateboards, eat a lot of really good food and, uh, you know, just try to be like the coolest friend to all my friends that I can be. So yeah, I, feel, I feel like that's constantly what you are thinking about. I wonder what he's up to. And then we'll just look and you're on a stage with thousands of people going crazy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so <laughs> I do, yeah. I, 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 I want to grow up to be like you is like, oh, is basically oh, yeah. where I, I want to grow up to be like you. Yeah. I, see, I can't really wear a suit, so I want to grow up to be just like you. <laughs> I, always I don't know if I'm actually way. wearing this right, um, but we're trying. Okay. Um, social media is something that is huge in your life. When did it first pop up onto your radar to say, hey, social media is something I want to get involved with. It's really cool. When did that start for I don't you? Even I don't even know if at first it was a conscious decision. And thank you for those roses, by the way, for sending those. Um, I feel like for me, it was like, I mean, it was definitely the MySpace era. You know, for me, that was probably sixth grade, seventh grade. And I think I did it more for music than anything because um, like I was, you know, I was searching a lot. It was like when electronic music was just starting to pop in America, which like electronic music is kind of my heart and soul. I mean, I love all music, but always been a big electronic guy and you know a lot of the the uh early electronic guys like skrillex and you know excision all those guys were releasing their dub plates on myspace so uh, yeah oh we're having, we're having dinner right now okay okay uh, so as uh, far as i usually so I, I in fact everyone so this is at your second time on meet me right it is, yeah, my second time ever, and uh, I, well, actually third. I went on earlier today for about an hour, and I gotta say, a very warm community. I've been really, really loving the the uh, community on here. Um, cool. Yeah, yeah. I, I so like, my like space that, that. all started, mm -hmm. and then um, from there, I think uh, I think what really took it to the next level was um, kind of like getting into college, you know, and. Uh, all throughout college, I was big on Instagram and Twitter and uh, always typing out the hot takes and everything. And that was back when there was no algorithms, right? So like mm -hmm. back in the day, you could pop on a live stream on Instagram. Or I, remember the, I remember the day Facebook did the live stream feature. I mean, I had probably almost probably like 500 people watching me DJ in my bedroom. Um, and nowadays, you know, you do that and there's five people. So it's, right. it's totally changed the marketplace. But, uh, but yeah, I think really music is the kind of focal point of what got me into social media. Um, that's where all the artists are. And, you know, I've always found myself in that light, like kind of arena. So uh, that's kind of how it all happened for me. Mm -hmm. Well, many people try to have some sort of presence in media or music. Many have tried anyway. I should say most people, many have tried. How did you get your first start? Where did you take your initial steps into radio, podcasting, music in general? Yeah, so for me, uh, radio happened like totally by accident. Um, I had started doing a podcast before that, like kind of just in my room. Like I had one microphone and I would talk to myself. It was nothing major. Um, but I was always really, even back before that, you know, growing up, I would always listen to like the Detroit radio stations in my boombox growing up, you know, like Channel 955, uh, 979 WJLB. Um, those were like my top stations, the Riff too, big, mm -hmm. big rock guy. Um, so after that, you know, I did my DJing thing for probably about six or so years and uh, I met someone who was the promotions director at iHeartMedia in West Michigan. Mm -hmm. um, Lo and behold, we ended up totally hitting it off the first day um, that we met. And she was like, well, I'm looking for an intern right now. And it was right when I was looking for an internship. And uh, it just worked out really well. She brought me on as her intern. And then that same day, we got a tour of the building. And uh, I met this guy named Stick, which if you grew up in Detroit, he was the night host on Channel 955 for like 10 years. 
I mean, I grew up listening to him playing with Legos in my basement um, mm-hmm. as a kid. And the first day we were there, we get the tour. I get introduced to Stick. And he's like, dude, anything you want to know, like, let me know. I'll help you out. And I was like, well, I've already been DJing. Teach me everything. And, uh, man, that guy's a saint. The next week, he trusted me to DJ on the air. And uh, about a week after that, I, I started cracking the mic and hosting. And uh, that was, man, three and a half years ago now. And, uh you know, I've been really fortunate. I, I definitely worked my ass off to get to where I, you know, I, I've become or where I've come with it. But um, a lot of people have put faith in me over the years. You know, a lot of big programming heads and uh, people who really move and shake in the radio business. And uh, that's kind of how I got, you know, my whole thing going. And the biggest thing, which kind of applies to like most careers, is like always crush it. And if people are asking you to do something, like don't say no, unless it's something like that really sucks. You know what I mean? Like any opportunity is an opportunity, even if you don't have the ability to see much past it. And that was something I really like anything. I was like, yes, give it to me. Yes, yes, yes. So, um, that's kind of how, you know, how I was able to climb the ladder a bit faster than a lot of people are. I love it. I love it. What what would you say is the status of radio? What is your impression right now? You live and breathe in the space of it. Yeah. We hear rumors you know, about it. What is your perception? Um, you know, right now uh, it's a big question mark, right? You know, so um just recently the largest media company made cuts of over uh, 1500 jobs which they have been known to be an industry leader. Um, and they, you know, they cut 30% of their workforce like that from all around the country. Um, so I think moves like that are definitely steering the direction of radio. And, uh, you know, do I think it's dying? Well, you know, it might've been dying for the past 10 years. Um, is it dead? Absolutely not. Um, I will say I've noticed this being in radio. It's always the people who say they don't listen to the radio that are the first ones to text you when you say something funny on the air mm-hmm. or uh, the, the fastest ones to be like, oh, sweet mix or whatever. So when I think about that and then I think about, you know, people's general consensus of like, oh, I don't listen to the radio. I think it's somewhere in the middle there. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, the 90s babies, if you will, the people who grew up on radio, you know, maybe not, don't listen to it every day, but the fact of the matter is like 93% of Americans interact with radio on a weekly basis in some way, right? Whether that's maybe you go into a store and they got a radio station, maybe you get an Uber and the the radio is on, maybe, um, you know, maybe you jump in your car and you don't feel like plugging your phone in because you're just going up to the corner store. So you click your first preset and there's channel 955. Um, Music radio is always going to be kind of, I think, a little bit on the decline. But I think where radio really thrives right now is personalities. Pers- truthfully, you know, people love listening to The Breakfast Club. People love listening to Mojo. People love listening to Elvis Duran. Those personalities are what keep the business afloat. And um, because of that, I think I think it's got a bright future, truthfully. I think a lot of it's going to, you know... All your, almost all your favorite radio hosts are doing podcasts, so I think that's really important. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, it ties down or it comes down to uh, personalities, and as long as personalities are there, people are going to be there. It's just the way it is. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 interesting that you say naysayers are the, probably the ones who are also taking part in it, which is interesting, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, Music, you said, will be on the decline, but you also mentioned that music was the reason that you got introduced into it. How do you keep music alive for you now? Is there anything that you're part of, that you're passionate about? Are you still able to scratch scratch that musical itch? What what would you say? Yeah, no, absolutely. So um, before, you know, I talk all about radio, but there was a big part of me that was into like the underground dance music scene for almost my whole life too. Um, And one thing that I've, for me, has really kept my, like, fire just, like, roaring about the whole radio thing is my role through being a mixer and being a personality and whatnot is kind of been crossing a lot of those. And we're seeing it a lot in radio right now just with, you know, like Diplo's got songs on the radio now. And, you know, a lot of these big underground acts, Marshmello is a, a, a top, you know, a top plate act on the radio. Um, for me... I see a lot of crossover and that's what's kind of kept my passion really on fire about it is being able to 
blend those two things and have it um, appeal to both sides. You know what I mean? Like it's not, oh, I'm into top 40 music or I'm into dance music. Sure. There's so much in between. And I mean, like for my mix shows, for one, um, you know, I do a lot of crossover. Like I do, um, I do like a club gig with channel 955. where like, I'm in the club playing a lot of dance music, but then I'll break it down into a, a top 40 record too and bring it back up. And you know what I mean? And being able to kind of work with those mediums has been what really like it makes me feel like I'm having an impact on radio. And uh, yeah, so to kind of answer your question, I think that is definitely what's like keeping it alive for, m- for me at least. Yeah. Music uh, in general, I'd say the DJ scene, it's from 2010, 2008, 2010. I feel like there was this little bit of a bubble where Rihanna was putting out some records. There were other artists that were putting out records, but they had EDM or like dance backtracks and moved in this progression where you now have people like uh, Tiesto, Marshmallow, Martin Garrix, their top 40 artists, which is you know, oh yeah, going from the underground to the top. Uh, right. What type of content are you doing on air? By the way, I know that you mentioned that you're on air and that you're um, you're announcing and that you're you're doing events. But what are these types of events and and what what is this content that you are doing? Yeah, yeah. So the on air content, um, it's a lot of kind of like tongue in cheek topics. Um, you know, people will call me up. It's cool. So I have it. I, so I work remotely on that station in Montreal, but I have it so people can call me. And I mean. We do everything from like, hey, hey, Samantha, why did your boyfriend cheat on you? All the way to like, you know, um, man, talking about, you know, my per- a lot. It's a lot of like relationship driven stuff. Um, but we talk, you know, we, we dive into a lot of stuff about social media, about, you know, the trends that are popping off, like the holidays, like this. Uh, this masked singer thing is popping off. I'll probably talk about that tonight in my show. <laughs> Um, it's literally all over the place. And the cool thing for me that kind of keeps it on track is like, I always just, I'm always very authentic in my approach. You know what I mean? Um, so that authenticity is kind of what has made my listeners like, you know, be attracted to what I have going on and all that. Um, so yeah, so it's a lot of all of our content as far as the events. Um, that's more of, you know, like a dance kind of like a club environment. Um, I get on the mic and I get all, you know, I'll, I'll shout people out and I'll, I'll find a group of girls that just walked in and, oh, well, I see she, like, tried so much harder on her outfit. What do you got going on? You know, in, like, a fun, <laughs> friendly, you know, fun, friendly way. That, I can only imagine from that uh, goer's perspective, like, wow, I just came up to have a good time and the DJ's really calling me out. Like, it's like, <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, like yeah, a whole yeah. different tier of getting called out. <laughs> oh, yeah. And, you know, I keep it fun. Like, I'm never, I'm never there to be hurtful or whatever. Um, but there's definitely, you know, a lot of what I do is poking fun at, people's normal lives. Cause I mean, I poke fun in my own life on the air too. You know what I mean? Oh, That's another thing too that um, is, is big with, you know, any kind of content creation is like really, I believe like sharing yourself in your own life is like one of the most important and valuable things you can do. You know what I mean? Like a lot of, I think the reason a lot of people fail when it comes to content creation is they're, they don't talk about themselves. They don't, let the audience feel like they know them. Mm. And that's one thing I try to relate my life to every topic we do. You know what I mean? Whether it's Sarah's boyfriend who just cheated on her. Oh yeah. Well I had a girlfriend. She, you know what I mean? Like Mm. throwing your own story into the, into all the situations is like so, so crucial. Um, so, do, you, yeah. do you have a favorite caller story or a favorite listener story? Oh, I do. Radio, radio moment. I was actually just talking about this the other day. I could play the audio from you. Um, <laughs> so when I was doing um, nights on the radio station in Grand Rapids, it's called 104.5 SNX, which Chris, obviously, you know, you're from the area, but anyone in West Michigan, you might know about that station too. Um, I used to do this thing called Talent Tuesdays, right? Okay. And <laughs> <laughs> we would have people, you know, rap or sing or tell us whatever their weird talent is. Um, and then we had this nice gal named Patty call me up. Sure. Her, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to forewarn you. Her, her talent is, it's a graphic one. It's not too bad. It's not, it's okay. not anything bad. But uh, <laughs> this was, if, this if, was, it was probably, if it was played on national radio, I feel like it can be player at least. Yeah, yeah, I feel it was, like it's, it's okay. It was, yeah. Yeah. It was on national radio. Hang on. Let me find, I got the big clip here. Let me, let me break it down. Mm. Kids that are 
Do I have any special talent? Ah, uh, yeah, but there, I can't say I'm on the <laughs> <laughs> Oh, what does that mean? Um, it's just something I can do with CDs. And it, yeah. With CDs? <laughs> tell me. Okay, I'll tell you, but you can't tell anybody. All right, fine. Okay. On the radio. So I can fit, like, five or six CDs on my nipple. Okay, okay and you found this out how? <laughs> Apparently, some of my friends thought it was a cool idea when I did a party while we were i was pretty well drunk so <laughs> damn girl that's like 36 hours worth of music on your nipples <laughs> <laughs> That's, that's, what kind of friends are those? They're like, that you get to that point too, where you're even in a situation close to being able to figure that out. I know, I know, for real. Um, There's so many that questions. Like, that's like the cool thing about radio though too, is like people feel like they're your friend, you know what I mean? So yeah. when... Yeah. When you're like, I was probably on for a couple of weeks when that happened, and uh, we had obviously shared enough to where they felt comfortable to share that with me. Yeah. Um, but it's like you you never know what you're gonna get. Like that's one of the things. I had one guy call me up. I don't have this one recorded, but one guy called me up, and uh, I knew this guy. He would call in. It's a lot of the same people that call up. This guy would call in all the time, right? One day he calls me up. Chuff. I'm like, what's up, man? His name was Blaine. I'm like, what what's up, Blaine? He's like, all right, man, I got a situation. So my cousin died. He left me a million bucks. I went to the casino last night. I got an escort, and my wife found a video of me with some other chick at this hotel. I'm like, yo. <laughs> <laughs> and then in the same breath, he's like, well, like I said, though, I just inherited like a little over a million bucks. I'm going to get a place, man. You should move in with me. I'm like, yo, I would love to, <laughs> but like, I just can't. <laughs> I mean, how fast do you think he blew the million? Like the next day, probably. Oh, dude, it's it's gone. It's gone. It's gone. It's, gone. it's, long, it's, gone. it's, it's gone. gone. There's no way. There's no way. Uh, yeah, but I mean, it's like it's everything from CDs on nipples to <laughs> hey, this I just got a million dollars to uh, you know I I eat my boogers when I'm too lazy to go get food. <laughs> Right, the nourishment, the nourishment, the nourishment value. Yeah, it's there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Google, Google. Uh, yeah, I'm interested in how you connect this to live streaming. So, just a little bit of context for everyone. The way Choff started on the platform was we were at dinner. Uh, oh, actually, you tell the story. So, we were at dinner. Yeah, last yeah, week. we were at dinner. <laughs> we were celebrating our buddy uh, Devante's birthday, and. Mm -hmm. um, you're, it had just always interested me what you did. Like I've done, you know, I used to do live streams all the time, obviously on, you know, Facebook, Instagram, on the, um, on the different radio station pages, on our pages, you know, it was cool. Cause we had, we had a big following on some of those pages. So, you know, it would, it would get a lot of attention even with the algorithms. But, um, I've noticed lately, like a lot of those, those platforms have been kind of dwindling. Um, and I love just getting on and talking, you know, whether it's talking, doing my show when I'm on the air and kind of getting people's feedback there, or maybe I'll be at an event DJing and, uh, doing that. I just always loved that kind of, you know, interaction. So I knew you did a, I knew you did a little thing on here and it interested me. So I kind of popped the question to you about, uh, getting involved with it. And, uh, thankfully you are super inviting and here we are. Oh yeah. You were made for this. I'm just counting down the days until they retire me for you. I mean, oh, you're please. like, you're like Chris 5.0, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was, I was like, I had that thought. I was, in the, I'm gonna be honest. I had that thought. I was in the shower, and I was, and I was like, you know, you have your shower thoughts or whatever. And I was going, what if they like chop more? <laughs> and then, I was like, he does the same thing, but much bigger than me. It's like, am I? It's like, am I inviting the wolf into the the chicken coop? Like, I don't no, no, not at all. If trust me, if they I like laugh, me, that much, pain, I'll say, I'll, I'll require you to be a part. <laughs> there's there's pain behind the laugh. <laughs> okay, but I, I, I connect. I want to connect though. Um, live streaming and what you've done. One of the first things that you said during this conversation was the community has been really inviting. You downloaded it and you said, "Is this a dating app?" And I said, yeah. "Well, kind of. Not really, though." What has been your perception? What was uh, the interest in the platform and getting started? You know, just expand on that thought of where you want to go with this. Yeah, no, um, it's definitely uh, some people see it as a dating app. I've noticed that already. Um, but that being said, there's a lot of people that you can tell just like do it for friendship or do it for sharing their ideas and thoughts. Um, for me, that's 
where I'm at with it. Like, I love the idea of just a community where you can pop on and, you know, talk about anything at all. Kind of like with the, you know, when I'm on the air here, mm -hmm. oh, this microphone, <laughs> <laughs> um, just, you know, just, just bringing up whatever topic for the day. And, uh, you know, obviously you have a big theme with yours, which I think is really, really cool. Um, but I love the, the open format nature of it. You know what I mean? While yes, a lot of people see it as a dating app. I love that you can kind of do anything in here. And, um, I've already, I've already, been able to see that there's like really great people no matter what it is you're talking about like earlier we were doing i was doing my show on here and people were chiming in and like contributing to the topics i was talking about which i thought was so cool um yeah, yeah it's, the open format nature of it is what like really drives me to it i mean I'm, I'm such an open format person i'm an open format dj like I, i'm like all over the place with things so i love that you can kind of do whatever it is you know the day calls for here yeah, excellent. Uh, it wouldn't be a conversation. I'm just staying mindful of our time here. It wouldn't be a conversation if you didn't plug what's on your shirt right there. Can you talk oh, about yeah. what, what that is, how you got involved, what it means to you? Yeah, so Samsara Family is a local group out of West Michigan. Um, and basically, well, actually, we, we've now stemmed into Colorado, too, which is kind of cool. Thanks to our buddy Justin. Shout out to Sandoz. So um, it's a... Artist Collective comprised of Super Future, Carpow, Devante B, Dree String, Sandos, myself. Am I forgetting anyone here? Probably, but there's a lot of awesome people. And um, basically, we all came together as DJs and we're like, hey, you know what? This DJ thing around here is kind of whack. Let's do our own thing and make it super cool. And we've put out a lot of really awesome uh, musical compilations. So if you check this out, Samsara Family. Um, we're on SoundCloud, Spotify. Um, we're on, you know, Instagram, Twitter, all those things. Um, we're basically an artist collective that just puts out really unique music and awesome stuff. And it's a really diverse group. Um, everything from kind of more hip hop sounds to future bass to dubstep to trap. There's even like, you know, guitar in a lot of the songs. You can call it rock or whatever. Um, I've, my role in the whole collective has been um, more so just kind of getting it going and then helping with the events and um, helping, you know, host as like a personality. Um, like we do a Samsara stream where we like listen to new music on there and stuff like that. I help a lot with that. Um, and, you know, overall, it's just been super well received by the community and we've had a ton of fun putting out the music. So, um, yeah, it's kind of uh, it's still a work in progress, just like everything in this beautiful world we live in. But um, it's a really, really fun music project to kind of sum it up. Yeah, the sense of community in, a, in an area where someone can be a little more individualistic. You know, this is my art, this is my style, it's for others to see, instead of having the mindset of bringing it together, sharing it, how can we promote and foster one another? Um, and you all have done very well with it. Um, so congratulations to all you guys and all that. What's next for you? I mean, you've got radio under your belt right now. You're working at that. You're starting this live streaming. I know that you've done some podcasting and been on other people's podcasts. What's next for you? What are what are you aiming towards? What would you ultimately like to do? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so uh, I know it sounds funny, but um, I really want to get more involved in radio than I already am. Um, so that's kind of one thing I'm aiming towards right now is I want to get more of a programming um, situation to where I'm kind of scheduling music for radio stations and things like that. That's a big goal of mine. I obviously do my show um, every single weeknight on uh, 94.7 Hits FM. I'm on 7 to midnight, so I'm on right now, actually. Um, I do that every day. So that's a really fun thing for me um, that I'm going to keep doing. Uh, podcasts are definitely, there's a lot more coming. So I do a, a show called Social Climax with uh, my good friend, Sarah G. We, uh, we do a lot of funny stuff. So she's kind of like your quintessential, like hot blonde girl. And okay. we'll like, set up dates for her where she records the audio and does a lot of funny, like she'll do stunts to, one of them was like, uh, Sarah G finesses a ride on a motorcycle, right? She found, she found this dude on Tinder. She finessed a ride on his motorcycle. He was like a total douche. And it was the funny, it, it, the audio was just incredible. Um, 
So we do a lot of stuff. That that podcast is like sheer content. Like we kind of come up with everything. I also do a podcast which is more interview focused, which is called the Trophcast. Um, and that is I interview a lot of like musicians and things like that. So I'm gonna keep definitely chugging along on that. I have a new episode coming with uh, Super Future and Reckno, which uh, they're two awesome artists and good friends of mine. They're actually on a tour around the U.S. right now. Um, so our podcast should be dropping soon. Besides that, I've got a new club gig starting in the Metro Detroit area this week, um, which I'm, or no, sorry, next week. Um, it's going to be every Saturday at Stadium Nightclub in Mount Clemens. So I'm super, super excited about that. It's with uh, Channel 955, which is uh, the number one uh, top 40 station in Detroit. Uh, Mel, you'll have to come hang out. Um but, uh, but yeah, so that's going on. And then, man, I'm in transition right now, like working on moving and all these things. So it's, uh, it's good, man. There's a lot of fun stuff down the pipeline. Yeah. I feel like I'm busy, but then I hear you and I go, well, maybe I'm not. <laughs> I'm, a lot less, I'm a lot less busy than I had been for the past year. I, um, over the past year, I was, you know, I was on three radio stations, um, every single week, actually four radio stations every single week, um, which was insane i was back and forth from grand rapids to detroit like probably four times a week almost like it was absolutely nuts um i was barely sleeping i would be out djing until 2 a.m and then have to be out for an event at 6 a.m and uh a lot of that so i'm a lot less busy than i was <laughs> let's say that yeah. much all right taking a breather well cool yeah. man uh any last thing that you'd like to shout out talk about something you're passionate about before we wrap up that uh man just really passionate about like bringing people up and uh, you know, spreading the love everywhere I go. You know, I, I use the term smile enthusiast um, as kind of my headline. Cause uh, I think it's super important. You know, I think all we have in this world is not to be tacky, but each other. And uh, <laughs> I'm really just um, excited for the future in that regard. That's kind of my, you know, my focus with everything I do, whether it's radio or whether it's events and everything like that. So uh, sure. look out for Chaff name and uh, yeah, that's, that's all we got. Excellent. Yeah. If people want to find you and find all this programming and things that they do, is it best to find you on Instagram to follow up? Where, where should they go? Yeah. Yeah. Instagram is where I post all of my events, all of my um, radio shows, podcasts. You know, I cut snippets out of my shows. If you're not into listening to the shows, you just want to maybe hear a bit. You go to my Instagram. There's a little highlight there. You can see all of that. So my Instagram is just, hey, like you're saying, hey, H-E-Y. And then Choff. So just my name and the title there, Hey Choff. You can see it uh, if you go to my profile there. It's on there. Um, but that's where you can keep up with me on, you know, podcasts, radio shows, events, music when I release it. Um, it's all on there. I got a lot of mixes too. So if you guys are into the mix life, if you hit the link in my bio there, there's a lot of content. I also, ooh, one other thing I wanted to mention. Um, I was a guest on a really funny show called Hot Tub Hot Takes. I saw that. And um, I just re the episode got released today. Um, it, there's a link to it in the bio of my Instagram, which my Instagram once again is Hey Choff. So H E Y, like you're saying, Hey C H O F F. If you go there, check out the link in my bio. And the first link is this hot tub, hot takes episode. My buddy, Brandon, um, who was actually my camp counselor at camp Coolabunga, which is Grizz's uh, summer camp that I went to. Um, he was my camp counselor there and he does this show and it's, hilarious um so yeah definitely uh check that out the, the editing's on point <laughs> the, the, the they, editing is on point they do such a good job with it and we talked for probably a half hour and he cut it down to that little the little bit that it is um and i just <laughs> i want to do another one because honestly now that i like have seen it more like we did that episode before they even launched it mm -hmm. um because they backtrack the episodes or, or back back stock, sorry. Mm -hmm. um, so I want to do another one now that I've seen it. But uh, yeah, it's hilarious. I've never seen a show like it. Brandon is a meditation coach and an all around life wizard. Um, he doesn't even have a phone because he doesn't believe in phones. <laughs> uh, so yeah, check him. He's, he's, a, a, he's a wild character, but he's he's the best for real. Um, yeah, so check that episode out. And uh, yeah, my Instagram is the best place to keep up with me. Cool. All I'll right. I'll be doing more stuff on here too. All right. So Chuff, we look forward to blowing up on here and doing well. You bring a lot of content and you are a lot of, uh, you are a lot of personality. Um, thank you for keeping me on my toes as always. So Anytime, much, love, dude. much love, dude. Thank you so much for coming on the show tonight. Make sure you hit this thumb on the favorite, everybody.
Yeah, hit me with that favorite and uh, let's get it going on. It's going to be such a fun journey here. I can't wait. I love it. I love it. I'll see you later, bro. Yeah, see you, Chris. Have a good one. Thanks again. Thanks. I'll do it. (laughs) He's new. He doesn't even know the box. Man, what a cool guy, right? See, I've been I've been making adjustments as to how people go on the show, right? And when you have when you know a guy like that, you've got to bring him on because he has so much content and so many things to say. It's it's just it's just so much, right? So, um, guys, this is basically the the omen to my resignation. <laughs> Chop is here to take over the world with his social media branding and uh, I swear I'm not kidding I was in the shower and I I straight up had the thought I was like man he does all these podcasts and things he does them really well what if they like him more than me (laughs) I mean I guess I lose all right so so anyway (laughs) I'm not I'm not quitting I'm not quitting you guys I just had I just had the shower thought All right, all right, all right. So, um, that being said, make sure that you show Chaff some love. But that was that was guest number one. We have two more tonight. So our next guest is an up and comer on the app, much like Chaff. But this up and comer is also a VIP. Uh, she has broken some million marks, doing excellent on her favorites, and she's here to talk a little bit more about herself. Somewhat an unconventional type of streamer. Her name is Devin. Devin, if you'd please go ahead and join us real quick. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our second guest tonight, the one and only Miss Devin. Chris. The goddess. Devin. <laughs> very, very important. You gotta, you gotta make sure you, you announce the title. The title. It's been earned. Exactly. <laughs> All right. So, Devin, how are you doing today? I'm doing fantastic. Yeah. I have a lot of support here. You do. I saw you roll through pretty big. Intimidate me. I always see these big supporters. It's, <laughs> it's something else. It's something else. Um, Devin, uh, if you could just start off by saying who you are, how long you've been on the platform. Okay, I'm I'm Devin. Um, I've I've actually been on Meet Me off and on since it was my yearbook, <laughs> um, mm. but I never went into live streams until last. I think it was like March. Um, you were the first, actually, the only streamer I watched <laughs> last year, and really? then I deleted the app for a very long time. And then I came back in December, and I was like, because it was all about the like like Chop said, like all about everybody wants to date and all that hookup and. So I deleted it and I came back in December and I was like, okay, I'm going to check out the live streams a little bit more. And so, yeah. When you, when you say that you downloaded it and you thought you kind of felt that it was all for dating, if you didn't download it for dating, what did you download it for? Um, actually to meet new friends. Uh, I moved to Iowa four years ago and most all my friends are in Tennessee. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So I was actually downloaded to like meet people to hang out with because as an adult, like where do you do that at, at the bar? Yeah, it's maybe coworkers, something like that. It's a it's a different yeah. world. Social media offers those opportunities, so I, I agree. That's that's an excellent thing. And when you first downloaded it, you said you you met some people, felt like it was dating, got off of it. What did you do when you got off of it? Where did you go? Um, I um actually play softball in the summer and <laughs> fall, so I you know I met I've met some friends through playing softball and stuff and. So that's what we did all the time. We played softball like three days a week, um, and then practiced the rest of the time. So is is your softball softball team one of those competitive, non competitive teams? Um, we, we we played on the beer league. The beer league, okay. All all non competitive, <laughs> drinking on the field, <laughs> missing yeah. the ball because they got a beer in the hand type kind of type yeah. kind of league. Okay, I like I can get that. We're on the outfield, you know. <laughs> would they would they get mad if I rolled the ball on the field as opposed to as opposed to like throwing it? No, they'd probably laugh. <laughs> okay. okay, all right. Well, I'm interested in signing. <laughs> uh, so, 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 you, so you did softball. You're hanging out doing that. Um, what brings you back? How do you how do you end up coming back to the platform? Um, have you? Well, you live in Michigan, so winters are probably worse there. I hate winter. Like I mm. get cold if it's below seventy degrees. <laughs> And there's nothing to do in Iowa. The bars, We're you go here, even on Friday and Saturday night, there's like five people and they're like really old. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, there's so, nothing to do here. Uh, what's, what's, the, what, what's the weather typically like in Tennessee? I mean, I know it's warm, but. 
Um, it's the winters aren't as harsh. There's not as much snow and ice. Um, occasionally mm. we got like a little bit, but um, it's just Tennessee's always felt like home, even though that's not where I'm from. <laughs> mm-hmm. But I just feel at home in Tennessee. I always have. So. I'm moving well, back to Tennessee. <laughs> well, Tennessee's not home. Where is home? Where Where are you? I'm working? originally from Missouri. Okay, and what? But I fought really hard to get out of there. <laughs> what? Ooh, so many questions now. You're from Missouri. Yeah. You didn't want to stay there. Let's start out. What? What was to do with Missouri? Um. Well, my my stepdad was um, military. He was army, so we moved around a lot. And I'm a Sagittarius. I don't know if you know anything about zodiac signs, but I am a forever wanderer. I love traveling. I love moving places, meeting new people. Um. And Missouri, we when we moved back there. Um, we lived in a small town of like 1,200 people. Okay. Everybody I, knows everybody I, and their business. <laughs> okay. I, I laugh because it's my understanding that uh, Mercury is in, in retrograde, and I don't <laughs> quite understand what that means, but I've been seeing a lot about it, and I know that's supposed to be important because things are not <laughs> – Things are going to seem off that are not supposed to be off or something. And, and so yes. maybe maybe that's why I thought I missed the show today. That could be why. That Mer- might be it. Mercury's in retrograde, obviously. That was why. Obviously. Uh, obviously. obviously. Dang Mercury. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. And, and, why, and why did you want to get out of there? What, what was so bad compared to getting over to something like Tennessee? Um, I, I don't really know when we moved back, which it's really weird, but when we moved back, I begged my parents not to move back to my mom's hometown because it was so small. Um, mm. I told them I would probably do better in like a little bit bigger town. Um, I like when there's a lot of people so I can meet like new people all the time, <laughs> mm-hmm. but, um, I don't know. I just never really, I never really cared for Missouri. I like ever, we always called it misery. <laughs> It's I mean, there are some really pretty community. things to go and see there. Like, you know, they get the Arch in St. Louis and they get the Lake of the Ozarks. And if anybody ever gets there, check out Herman, Missouri. It's a really nice German town. Okay. Yeah. I, yeah, I just never really liked, I hated Missouri. Would, would you consider <laughs> yourself to be a, a country girl? Uh, yeah, maybe. Yeah, we a like loop, to go mudding warm. and camping and hiking and. But and we live next to a horse barn, so I love horses. We used to go over and take help take care of them all the time. So I feel like yeah, we're qualified. qualified. I think I'm kind of in the middle though, because I can do well in the city too. So. Okay. Do you hunt? Um, I took the hunter safety course. I just never actually went hunting. My family owned a bunch of land in Missouri that they all went hunting on. My mm-hmm. mom, my dad, my brother all went hunting. I stayed at the deer shack and um, ate the deer jerky. <laughs> The, the, some of the, the around the bonfire. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I I feel like I would freeze up and cry if I like had to shoot a deer. I'd be like, but it's cute. You're right. Yeah. You're right. <laughs> then I yeah. couldn't do it. I feel like yeah. I know <laughs> that, and they go out like at four o'clock in the morning. I am not a morning person. <laughs> yeah. That's and my excuse. <laughs> That's my excuse. I don't want to wake up. Yeah. I'm stay by the fire. <laughs> right. Okay. Um, then you moved to Tennessee. And we took a big detour with our conversation because here we are. So you said you um, you went and played softball. How did you end up downloading the app again? Um, like I said, it got cold. Um, not much to do. Um, and I don't really watch a lot of TV. I watch Netflix sometimes, and I play video games occasionally. But mm-hmm. um, there really, yeah, there really wasn't much to do. So I was like, well, let's go check out Meet Me. I know they got them live streams. <laughs> And at that point, I had already like deleted my whole account and everything. So like I created a new account and um, and then was like, okay, I'll just I'll just kind of stay away from the DMs. <laughs> okay. And just straight to the live streams. And I was like, oh, let's check some people out. And um, I ended up in Chris Chaos's stream. <laughs> um, he had, I guess just just created his new account like a few days before that and. Um, I was like, oh, he's really nice and inspiring. And, you know, I talked to him for a few few days. And then that weekend I was like, oh, okay, you know, I think I'm going to go live. <laughs> Why yeah. not? Yeah. So, what, yep. What, what was it about the community that you felt was different compared to the first time that you were on? Um, I realized on the live streaming that well, people are everywhere and they're all, there's a lot of really <clears throat> good people that aren't, just looking to send you nudes in the DMs or trying to hook up with you. Well, there's a lot, still a lot of that. <laughs> I just I have no clue. Never, never heard. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. But um, <laughs> yeah, there was just, there. 
a lot of a lot of the streamers just make you feel welcome and like they uh, really want to talk to you and get to know you and stuff. So mm -hmm. um, when you went live for the first time, did you have any fear, hesitation? Had you had any experience doing something like a live stream before? I had never had any experience with any kind of live stream going on video. I've always hated it. <clears throat> and I was actually really shy growing up. Like, um, I actually was called stuck up a lot because I usually don't talk unless I really have something to say. Um, okay. I'm more of a thinker. <clears throat> so when I went live for the first time, I was like, oh, nobody's going to come. I'm not going to have anything to talk about. <laughs> mm -hmm. They're going to like hate my stream, but it, it was actually really good. It was a really good stream. I had a lot of people actually that first night I had over a thousand views, like really fast. Wow. So, wow. Yeah. It was a really good stream. Yeah. <laughs> what did you find that? We're getting a little feedback. Little feedback. Boop. Okay. We're good. <laughs> it's the boop. It's the, 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 it's the check boop. Okay. <laughs> what did you find that uh, ended up being the, the fit for you? Did you, you feel like you just, you had the nerves, you just snapped into it and then people were very conversational or do you feel like you had a learning curve and, uh, and then you like fell into it? All right. Um, I found I found people are really a lot of them are really conversational. Um, <clears throat> I found that um, people people respond to kindness. Um, I I encourage kindness in my stream. I kept out anybody that wasn't kind, um, and people just felt like uh, as 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 the couple months have went on, people have felt you know safe to come and they're able to talk about anything they need to. Um, they know that if they really need somebody to talk to, I'm a really good listener and they're always able to message. Um, mm -hmm. So I've, been, I've made some really, really good friends so far on here. You, you accomplished your original goal. I did, yes. Is, I've actually really made cool. a lot of friends on here. <laughs> yeah. Have, have you had an opportunity to connect with any of them outside of the platform? Are you considering doing that off of app? Um, yes, I've actually met Chris Chaos. We hung out when I went down to uh, Nashville in December um, over New Year's Eve and stuff. So wow. yeah, we've, we've actually hung out. Yep. Um, cool. and I do, I've been talking to some of my friends in the UK, so that's, uh, I want to make a trip over there. I talked to George earlier today and we were talking about where I should go. And, um, I had, I, I connect really well with people from UK. <laughs> why, why do you think that is? I don't know. Me, uh, we and George were trying to figure that out earlier, but like, huh. uh, me and Ollie are friends, Georgie, George, Panda, Josh, <laughs> so many over there. And I'm like, yeah. I got to make like a trip all around the UK. <laughs> yeah, do a little tour, figure things out. Over but there. also I've always wanted to go to the UK anyways, because they have a place called Devonshire over there. And George informed me today that there's actually um, a town called Devon and it has a sign that says, welcome to Devon. So I have to go get a picture. You could be the mayor. Yes, I'm going to like, this is my ID. Look, it's my name. <laughs> <laughs> this is my city. My town. It's my town. I love it. The, um, what about playlists or, or uh, maybe VidCon or anything like that? Are you considering an, on an even bigger scale, meeting a lot of people at once, anything like that? Um, yeah, we're actually going to playlist. Um, me and Chris Chaos are going down there. Um, yeah, it's going to be fun. There's a lot of people that are going there that I'm super excited to meet. So Very nice. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Playlist. I haven't listened to VidCon, though. I, I'm not even sure what that is. <laughs> It's like a playlist, but we won't spend our time plugging it. We can do it on a different stream. Okay. This is this is your time. This is your time. Okay. <laughs> it's definitely time. Uh, I like I like your story though because it started with great intentions and they were fulfilled. Um, you had a little bit of first nerves getting on. If someone's watching right now, maybe you know they're they're feeling a little apprehensive of going live themselves, or they're not sure how people will treat them if they go live. What advice do you have, or what can you say from your own experience to help them? I would say um, it is it is very it is very nerve wracking the first time you go, even the first couple of times. You don't know who's if anybody's going to show up. Um, I know actually I've talked to several that um, struggle with that people showing up, and um, I, I try to give them tips. I don't keep keep trying, keep going. It builds up, um, and I try to support them as well. You know, sending mm -hmm. blasts or just coming and chatting with them. Or um, I would I would say do it though. It's it's really. I'm not sure the right word, but it's really, it's really great. Like having everybody come and, and chat with you and, you know, want to get to know you. Um, mm -hmm. And you, you never know, you might meet lifetime friends. Yeah. And the perception of everything that may go wrong could go wrong, but 
you have to you have to know that everything that could go right can go right too and exactly. it's, it's all about your perspective on it and i feel like you did a great job of, of handling that um these days when you're not live streaming um and not drinking beers on the field what what, <laughs> what keeps you busy what what do you like to do during the day or what do you do during uh, the day i also i well i work i work from home now um i've been with my job for almost four years so um i work full time from home so that keeps me busy i also have three kids <laughs> um that keeps you busy yeah. Uh, very busy. Yeah. <laughs> um, I also like painting. Really? Um, yes, I love painting. Um, got one in the back, sort of. You can kind of see it. But uh, so I do that. Um, I usually read a lot. Um, Excellent. And video games. Yeah, PS4. That, that takes up a lot of time. <laughs> What's in the console right now? What What are you on? Um, Apex or uh, Call of Duty: Modern Warfare. Okay, a bit a bit of that that shooter action. Oh yeah. Excellent. Oh, that's very stress relieving. <laughs> oh, I'm right, well, happy it's happening in there. It's Call of Duty. I'm telling you. <laughs> I feel like that's definitely the right environment. <laughs> no deer will no be deer harmed will or be people. Or people. Yes. <laughs> I like. It. I like. It. Uh, uh, no. No. Okay, GBC. What is this GBC thing that um, I know that you're a part of? I know that you spoke about it passionately before. It's something that's important to you. What is what is this GBC? Yes, it's um, Chris Chaos. It's, sorry, it's Chris Chaos's um, group. Mm. Um, we're it's a family. Um, everybody, you know, cares about everybody. We're there for each other. Um, if one of us is sad, everybody comes to check on them. Believe me, mm -hmm. I got that the other day. <laughs> so, yeah. like, it's it's really caring. They're really kind. They spread try to spread positivity and you know kindness and, um, yeah, it's it's been great. Cool. It's growing cool. fast. <laughs> That's, that's excellent. Uh, so, one of the last topics I'd like to talk about with you is this: you're you're a VIP currently. Um, and you're, you're looking for that top badge. So uh, if you just break down, you know, what would being a top badge mean to you? Why is it important? Things like that. Um, I applied for a top badge, um, because well, you know, it, the trending boost, but I feel that way. Um, I could, I feel like I could reach more people and, you know, spread positivity and kindness. Um, I have a story. Um, uh, I, I don't like people kicking people from my stream. Um, you never know what somebody's going through. They could just be having a rest, rough day. Um, but uh, it was uh, a week ago, um, a guy came into my stream and his name is Dame. Um, mm -hmm. But he was talking about he had um, was being nice in streams and he always kept getting kicked for whatever reason. And I was like, you know, well, you won't get kicked from here. Um, we love, you know, nice people. And um, I, I was like, we're always trying to be kind. I encourage kindness. Well, um, somebody weird got in a date box showing so they weren't supposed to. And um, I did have a bouncer in there and asked them, you know, to kick, you know, to kick them. And uh, he accidentally kicked the wrong person. <laughs> he kicked Dame. And I felt so horrible. I immediately went and then blocked him and sent him a message and told him that, you know, I apologized profusely. I was like, it was, it was an accident. Um, and I was like, please come back. Um, it won't happen again. And uh, I was like, you know, I'll make you a bouncer. So it definitely doesn't happen again. <clears throat> and at first he was a little, he was a little upset. He's like, that's what I get for being nice, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, he did come back to my stream, but he wasn't able to type because he had just been kicked and unblocked. He hung out in my stream all night long and we spoke through the DMs. He could hear everything that was going on. <clears throat> he, um, he was so happy that we were, you know, you know, so kind that I came and unblocked him immediately and apologized and that my bouncer was, oh, my bouncer was apologizing previously in the stream. And mm -hmm. so I made a really good friend and showed him that, you know, that that stuff doesn't have to happen. And if it is, if there are accidents. And um, yeah, he hung out my stream the whole time. And then the next day he came back and was able to type. So Yeah. All right. And so is the connection. The connection. Hello. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Is the connection that you would like to serve as a bit of an example of what mm -hmm. good camaraderie and yes. almost sportsmanship, streamership is? Yes. You know, to yes. provide yes. Spread, kindness. Spread kindness. You know, mm -hmm. there's it doesn't it costs nothing to be kind. Um, uh, to keep out the negativity, um, I've, you know, there's negativity on the app. There's negativity everywhere. <laughs> but mm -hmm. if you can keep positive and give people a safe place, they can, they can feel free to come and you know, be themselves and chat and 
um, they're being kind, you know, everybody's being kind to them. They're being kind back and it makes everything more fun that way. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Uh, if someone would like to learn more about you or see more of you, when do you typically go live? Um, I'm typically live in the, live in the evenings um, around 7 uh, central, I try to. Um, I have been doing some day streams. I try to go live during lunch um, because I have a lot of friends in the UK and that's the only time they can <laughs> really get into my streams. So, um, I feel like part of you is catering to them. You're like, accept me. Make me one of you. <laughs> Maybe you can somehow Please. trick them in, in the, your, your Missouri accent. Could be a, a UK accent. As well. I'm from the UK. This is a UK accent. This is a UK accent. What are you talking about? Right. Yeah. What are you talking about? <laughs> I love it. I love it. Uh, is there anything else that you'd like to share that you're passionate about that you'd like to talk um, bo- or go over before, before we wrap things up tonight? Um. Everybody say kind. I do want to show you one of my paintings if I can. Absolutely. But everybody say kind. Spread kindness and positivity to everybody. Um, mm-hmm. we, there's enough negativity in the world. We don't need more on our little safe place online. <laughs> People yeah. come here to feel relieved and, and chat and connect with people. Mm-hmm. So, um, actually, and this is the one that Jose is buying. He was in the comments. But this is my one of my favorite ones. Oh, oh that's nice. That's nice. Yep, and I've got like a little, I put a little funny thing in here. It's like a little guy with a knife. <laughs> it's a clown, I think, but you can't tell. <laughs> What's the inspiration for that? <laughs> why, why, why the clown with a knife? It's so pretty. <laughs> well, you, I mean, you watch Pennywise, right? And my daughter, she she finds that stuff so funny. She has a dark sense of humor a little bit. <laughs> oh. All right. All right. If you guys want to stay on her good side, you know where to get a painting. Uh, just, <laughs> yeah. no, just, in case, just in case, for whatever reason. Yeah. Um, thank you so much for coming on the show tonight. It was great to, to learn more about you and hear some of your story. Thank you for having me, Chris. Definitely. Definitely. It's great. All right. Everyone, if you've enjoyed this conversation, you want to get to know the future mayor of Devon uh, <laughs> slash your newest UK resident, go ahead and hit her with a favorite. Thank you so much. It's great to see you again tonight. Thank you, guys. No I'll talk to you. Bye. Bye. Why, why do I, in these conversations, like it's a phone call? I go, all right, yeah, talk to you later. Okay, talk to you later. Bye. Bye. It's like, <laughs> it's, not, it's not a phone call, Chris. Like, what are you, what are you doing? It's not, not a phone call. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, all right, all right. So that's that's two of the guests tonight. So we had the the eccentric and uh, awesome Chafan, and then we had obviously the newest UK resident Devin. But we've got a third guest, a third guest tonight. Um, another uh, awesome gentleman, up and comer, someone who is a, a friend of a friend. And I wanted to make sure that they had their story told because um, the the platform is, is made for that, right? And so for our third guest tonight, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Turnup Splendid Daddy. Not to be confused with the sweetener. <laughs> but he's sweet, right? right? Cool. How's it going, brother? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing. I'm doing very well. We're we're hanging out. We're we're enjoying the live stream, getting to know everyone. So uh, I, I was excited to, to have this conversation with you. I'm 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 a little. Ner- I was a little nervous about it, but I think I'll be all right. No, just remember that we're brothers in glasses, and we got each other's back. I don't know. That's a first. I like. I looked. You were in the camo. I'm in the suit. You're you're good with hats. I look like a four year old if I wear a hat. So it's like, I don't I don't I don't know that you know. It's like but the glasses, the glasses. I was like that's what we can do. <laughs> yes, I love it. I love it. All right. So um, for those who haven't met you before, um, obviously birth name, first name Splenda, last name Daddy. No. Um, so I've changed my name a couple times on here. Um, I used to be, I uh, used to have it as my actual name, which is Ryan. Um, and then for a little bit, I changed it to turn up man. Uh, I, when I gained the turn up to, I've had the turn up tag for a while. Mm-hmm. Um, I switched it to Mandalorian just because I like the Mandalorian. Um, and it was something different. Um, Splendid Daddy was actually a joke. Really? That, that was actually a joke and it kind of stuck and it was funny and I liked it. Um, I used to be a VIP. I was a purple VIP. I let my badge go. 
uh, for my own personal reasons. Sure. Um, so as a VIP, it was funny to have as a VIP to have my name as Splendid Daddy because when people when some people see VIPs, they think, "Oh, big gifter," stuff like that. You get sure. those people that DM the the VIPs and the big gifters and stuff like that. So everybody knows that Splenda is not real sugar. Yeah. I, I like that a lot. That's very creative. I like that a lot. Daddy, and I thought it was funny. A lot of people thought it was funny. Okay, so Splendid Daddy, you're the real thing, though. You may you may be fake sugar, but you're the real thing, um, Mr. Ryan. Uh, you have been on the app for how long? Can you remind us? Uh, I've been on the app for almost two years, actually. Two years. So you've been doing this for a hot minute. Um, we can, I, you know, I'm interested to know about your journey and the things that have happened um, over over the time of you being on it. But I'd like to start the conversation a little bit more about talking about who you were before the app. You know, what life was like and what led you to it. So, so take us back. What was life like back in high school for you? Um, so I, I come from a really small town. Um, everybody knew everybody. Um, you know, I, I worked while I was in school. I played mm-hmm. sport. I played multiple sports. I played football, baseball, ran track, and I wrestled. Um, and then in my free time, you know, when I wasn't playing sports, um, I was at work or I was doing something with FFA. Um, I was a very, very busy person in school. What is FFA? Future Farmers of America. It's actually a national association. Um, but a lot of schools have it as well. Mm -hmm. Um, So I was a part of that. I was actually an, I was actually an officer. I was the, I was the treasurer. Okay. For a little, and then I moved up to vice president. Um, whenever before I graduated, I was vice president of of our chapter. Um, and then, but I graduated high school uh, back in 2011. Uh, I actually graduated early. Um, and then I joined the military. Hmm. Uh, so, did did you grow up on a farm? Is that is that how that works? So how do you get involved? Did you just know that you want to be involved in agriculture? How does how does that all come together? I grew, I grew up on a farm. So I'm from a very small town in North Carolina. Mm-hmm. And I grew up on a farm. So it was kind of already in my culture. Sure. Per se. So it was something that came very natural to me. Yeah. What kind of farming? Because I'm... I am a little bit sad to say that only until maybe high school did I realize that not everyone had the same type of farm thing going on. It's not like a cow, group of cows and group of pigs and some corn. There's specialized crops, obviously, you know. So what, what type of what type of farming did you do? We did we did tobacco, we did soybeans, and we did cotton, and then we did hay. Um, oh. I did livestock, but we weren't like an actual livestock farm. Um, but yes, I had horses, I've had goats, I've had cows, all that good stuff. So I feel like one of the stereotypical things about farmers is that they're very hard working. That's very tough work. Is that true? Is this being a, a cotton or tobacco farmer, very difficult labor intensive? Farming in general is just labor intensive. Uh, it's, it's stress. It can be very stressful. Um, you know, because you're, you're putting you're putting you're putting money out there that you don't know if you're gonna get that back in return. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of it's kind of a lot of give and take. You know, you you do what you you do your part, but you may not get that back, or you may profit. It, it really depends. Every year is different. Yeah, that's that's scary because. Crops aren't something that happen immediately. You you invest in you put this time, this energy, and what happens if it's a flop? You know that's I, I mean that's honestly not something that I considered. Is that someone's entire livelihood could be based upon how well something grows this year, yep. which is which is pretty crazy. So, but you mentioned that you end up going to the service. What branch of the service did you go into? I'm in the Navy. You you are in the Navy, so you're currently currently an active member. Okay. 
city for a little bit over seven years. October of this year will make my eight year mark. Wow! Wow! Well, congratulations on that. That's a lot of a lot of ded- dedication. Uh, what what specifically is your duty? What what area? What do you do? So I'm an E5. Um, so E5 is kind of like a middle management uh, rank. Um, I particularly, I am what they call a HT whole maintenance technician. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm a welder, fabricator, pipe fitter. Uh, plumber and mechanic. Hmm. Wow! So, um, for the mechanic side, I, I work on boat on outboard engines for boat for small boats. Um, that's for that's more of the mechanic side, mm-hmm. and then more so. Typically, I'm more so a welder, fabricator, and pipe fitter. So anything that anything that can be that needs to be fabricated, I can do. Um, most welding I can do. There's some stuff that is like more like advanced welding that I'm not into yet, but yeah. we're getting there. Do you stay on ships? Are you on submarines? How does that work? I can be on any ship in the Navy except submarines. Well, I mean, I can be on a submarine too, but it's not very common uh, for my my specific rate to be on a submarine. But any other ship in the Navy, yes. Um, but I'm naturally I'm on a ship, but we do have the Navy does have what they call shore duty, which is what I'm on right now. So I did five and a half years on an aircraft carrier, and then I'm now on shore duty um, for three years. And then my next command is actually going to be a guided missile destroyer in Japan. That's a whole title of badassery just in one name. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is it, is it as intense as it sounds? I mean, I feel like it has to be. I mean, every every ship has its has its specific mission that it that it that it does the capabilities that they have. I mm. mean, um, the aircraft carrier is pretty self explanatory. It's it's a, it's a, it carries aircraft. We aircraft carriers launch and recover aircraft. Yeah. It, okay. It's the largest. Okay. It's the largest ship. In the, it's the largest ship in the navy. Whereas, like a guided missile destroyer is one of the smallest ships in the navy, but it also packs a lot of firepower. Yeah, yeah. I would be almost more nervous to be. I don't know. Is it more nerve wracking to be on a very small ship or a very big ship? I, I can't really comment on that because I've only been on one kind of ship, which is an mm. aircraft carrier, which is a very large ship. So every ship has a different feel to it because of the size. Um, I've obviously heard stories that, oh, smaller ships are better. Oh, no, bigger ships are better. Um, so it's, for me, it's kind of like I, I take that into account, but I'm not going to make an assumption on it until I've actually experienced it myself. Awesome. How long do you have left or how long do you intend to stay in the Navy? Um, so my plans changed. Um, I When I joined the Navy, I was like, okay, uh, so I originally joined the Navy to be a diver because uh, my dream job was to be an underwater welder. Okay. That did not work. That didn't work out. I destroyed a bunch of ligaments and tendons in my ankle, and I got dropped from the diver program as a medical risk. Um, and then I became what I am now. Um, during my first enlistment, um, I ended up getting married. I had a kid. Um, and that kind of changed my entire perspective on why I'm be- why I'm in the Navy now. Um, mm-hmm. I stay in the Navy now for my child because of the benefits and the stability of being able to take care of my son. Yeah. Um, sounds like you know quite a, yeah, I have a, somewhat of a similar story to someone else that's on this app uh, that we talked to, which I think we'll probably bring up in a little bit here. But... Uh, okay, so let's fast forward. How does Meet Me come into play? How do you download the app and get involved with it? So I used to be on Meet Me uh, long before it was live before live streaming was even a thing. Um, mm. As because I was new, I was new to the area that I'm in. Wanted to meet people that weren't like Navy people that I worked with and stuff like that. And then whenever I met my wife, I obviously left the app, um, and then. My ex-wife and I were married for almost four years. Um, we get we ended up getting separated and get and going through a divorce. 
happily divorced. Um, and I re-downloaded Meet Me uh, to kind of try to get back out there, meet new people, because I had no life, no friends, mm -hmm. other than like military friends. Um, so I got the got the wild hair one day to re-download it. Uh, met some really a couple really good people, and uh, then they kind of talked me into live streaming, and I started live streaming, and I really enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. There's um, there's something that uh, I did want to dive into, no pun intended, uh, <laughs> because y you did use that terminology happily divorced, and I know that being in the service can put and take a toll on someone. Um, just due to the duties and the time commitment, things like that. Uh, do you feel like um, your time in the service is something that you've had a positive experience with then? Um, or do you, do you wish, or how, how, do you, how do you reflect on your, your service then? Um, I don't regret it. I mean, some, some days it's, it's just like any other, any job that any, anybody else would have. It has its good days. It has its bad days. Yeah. It has, its, you know, it has politics just like the rest of the world. So, I mean, it really kind of depends on how you, how you take it, mm -hmm. um, how you, how you react to how thing how things go. Yeah. Um, I don't get any of it. I've seen some really cool stuff. Um, actually, whenever I go back home, from time to time, um, some of my, like my dad, um, uh, some of the guys that he works with, they were talking to me about it and it kind of just made me realize that I need to be more, more humble about it. Um, because when, it, when people ask me about my military service, like places I've been, stuff like that, um, to me, it's no big deal, you know, because I, you know, I'm the one that I've been there, I've done it and mm -hmm. it's not really that big of a deal, but to other people, it's really cool. They want to hear about it. Um, they want to know all kinds of, they ask a lot of questions. They want to know about the stuff. And it made me realize that, you know, to other people, this is the coolest thing in the world. Um, one of the guys actually told me, he, you know, I'm 26 and I've deployed twice, been to at least eight countries. And, you know, this guy, he's, you know, in his 30s. And he goes, you've seen more stuff in your life than I ever will in my entire life. And you've only been in the military for seven years. Hmm. Yeah, yeah that's that made, me, made me really think back like, wow, I need to really be more humble about this because yeah. to some people, this is amazing. Sure. Mm -hmm. Great, grateful, grateful or appreciative of the experience. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, because you do seem to be a very humble person. Uh, and, and so I, I would, you know, I'd definitely give you that. Uh, and, and you joined the app, you joined the, the platform. How did it go? I mean, you're here now, you've developed some friends. What, what do you think? What do you feel? Uh, it started off slow, just like it does for, it seems to, for a lot of people. Uh, it's real slow at the start, but then you get, you get in with some people, you get to know people, get your name out there. Um, I, uh, I, I, you know, I, I was, you know, I feel like I'd always, I've always done decent. Uh, I don't think I've ever done really bad. Mm -hmm. um, I did take a, I did take a break for a while, uh, just because I kind of got caught up in in the uh, meet me world a little bit too much, uh, with worrying about you know people who come see me if I get gifted. Um, I I did originally uh, try to go for my top badge. Um, and then it just, I kind of got discouraged and, um, you know, gave up on it, which is okay. Um, being in a top badge is not for everybody. Um, and with how much I work, I, I wouldn't have been able to do it anyway. Okay. Yeah. Especially with the newer requirements now, I, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even be able to, to maintain that many hours because live streaming as a top badge can, is very stressful. It, it can be it can be many hours of commitment. That's that's true, uh, but it does sound like you were fulfilled or have been fulfilled in the sense of making relationships, gaining friendships, things like that. How how has that unfolded for you? Um, I've met good people and I've met bad people. Uh, I think that's everybody on this app. There's good people. There's bad people. Um, it's kind of a trial and error type of thing. Um, 
even before, you know, I was a VIP, I tried to, you know, branch out, find new streamers and stuff like that, because there are, there is a lot of unnoticed talent out there, you know, people that you would never think that you would go into their stream and you go in there and it's like, wow, this is amazing. And then they become one of your favorite people. Yeah. Um, so that I like that aspect of it. Um, I try to impact as many people's uh, lives as much as I can. Um, you know, I can't get around to, you know, I can't do it for everybody, but you know, if, you know, people that come to me that know me, uh, they all know that if there's, if there's ever anything going on, please let me know. I'll do my best to, to give you what advice that I, I can. Um, if, I mean, I don't even have to give advice. If you just need someone to listen, mm -hmm. you know, I'll do my best to just sit there and listen. Um, I try for my streams. I like it to be, I don't really have like a theme thing that I do. A lot of streamers have like a theme, um, like you with your show. Sure. I don't really have that. Yeah. I'm more so it's kind of come in. I kind of let the viewers kind of dictate the, the dynamic of the stream. If y'all want to be funny and joke and stuff like that, then let's go. If y'all want to talk about some real serious stuff, we'll talk about serious stuff. Um, you know, we can kind of talk about whatever. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, where I was going with this is, have you made any connections? Have you met anyone from the app? Do you intend to meet anyone from the app? How, you know, what, what has it, what has come to fruition from it all? I've met a couple people. Uh, I've also made some very good friends that I've not actually physically met in person, but they're still really good friends. A couple of them are down there in the comments right now. Um, uh, there, uh, Caitlin, for example, Sabrina, um, Nurse Steph, Petey, you know, all these people that are in here, down here, you know, cheering me on while, while mm -hmm. we're doing this interview. Um, you know, these are all people that I've made connections with that I have a, a connection with. As far as people that I've met, um, Craig is one of them. Not bad, Craig. So, so I've, I've actually physically met Craig um, and actually hung out with him. He's one of the bigger people that I've, I've met and hung out with. Um, there's a couple people that I've met that are actually in Virginia as well that stream on this app. Um, one of them happens to be in the military. One of them is a military spouse. Okay. Um, and then there's another military spouse that, uh, that I've met as well. So, a lot of the people that I've met are pretty much in this, just in my area, um, except for Craig. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, there's actually only one out outside of the area that I've met. I've met someone in South Carolina um, as well, but other than that, I haven't really met that many people. I would like to. I just I don't really have the time to travel like that to be able to do it. Lots of responsibilities. Totally understandable. Um, well, if, uh, if people had to learn something about you that they wouldn't guess, or if you could give something to us that we wouldn't guess about you, do you have a surprising fact, anything that, anything that might catch us off guard? Uh, there's a few people in here that, that already know this about me. Uh, I'm slowly working on it. Um, I play guitar. Okay. Uh, I, I actually, I, I do play guitar. Um, I don't play on stream. Uh, I will play recordings and stuff like that, but I can't bring myself to actually play on stream just because uh, I'm very self-conscious. I'm scared to. Okay. Um, I don't currently have one right now um, because I, I had to get rid of it for, for other reasons, yeah. um, but I had to get back into it. Um, and play for people because there are people that have heard my uh, the stuff that I've done. And they're mm -hmm. like, oh my god, why, why don't you do this on your stream? Like, this is amazing. Well, may maybe when you get one back, you can go and take take it over. Yeah. So, um, so as we wrap up here, um, are there any last things that you'd like to share or talk about before you go? Well, since I brought up the whole guitar thing, if you would like to hear one of them, I will play it. Yeah, I wasn't gonna put. I was in my mind playing like I wish you could hear one, but I didn't want to put you on the spot. So yeah, let, yeah. I mean, if if you feel feel comfortable, yeah, let's do it. Is it an original? Is it a cover? 
It's actually a cover. It's okay. uh, it's uh, a co It's my own cover of "Don't Let Me Down." Like the, the yeah, the song by the Chainsmokers. For this, or did what? What did you do to what part of that did you do? So, what? So, I thought it was interesting because you're covering the, actually the vocal. Yes. Yeah, I was so honestly at the beginning. I thought I thought when I heard the beginning, the I was like, no. I was like, you didn't do that. And then, then, then I heard, I was like, oh, that's the part that he did. Because I was like, that is way too clean. That's like way, that's like exactly the studio rip. And I was so skeptical. And then and then, it, then you did the, I heard the vocal cover part. And I was like, oh, that's amazing. I like to do like a, like a vocal kind of cover rather than like the actual song because it's something different. Yeah, no. And I, get, I think that's really cool. I'm happy that you did that because that's a little bit more out of the box than just trying to cover the other instrument notes that's that's really cool i did actually throw my own little twist into this like my own kind of style so and it's coming up right now That was great. I really like that. You should all, like, put that on YouTube or something. That's like awesome. You, you, yeah, you need to get the guitar back ASAP and start playing on your lives, man. Um, the first time will be the hardest. Maybe you just like don't face the screen or something the first time you do it. Uh, but then after that, I feel like you'll be rolling. Yeah, that's what a lot of people have told me. They're like, maybe you could just do like a do like a black screen live yeah. and kind of kind of just turn off your comments while you play yeah. and then you play, you know, turn your comments back on stuff like that. I've been given a lot of ideas. It's just getting myself up to it to actually do it. Um, and then, like I said, I'm going to Japan soon. Uh, it'll be next year. Uh, it was supposed to be this year, but it got moved to next year. So it's kind of like with that, once I go to Japan, I actually won't be able to stream as much because mm -hmm. I'll be back on the ship and we'll be gone a lot. So I won't really have the time to stream. Yeah. Well, it did, you did an excellent job. I think everyone here enjoyed enjoyed it. I like the solo part. I mean, every, a lot of people know from the back of my phone, I, I keep a lot of those guys, yeah. So, I mean, I, I you know, a little, little rock twist on that, the chain smokers, I'm, I'm about it. So, excellent. Um, if uh, if you could let everyone know when, you, when you'll be live next or, or when you go live, so that if they, if they enjoyed this conversation, they can come watch you, uh, go, go ahead and plug away. 
lately I haven't been streaming on a legitimate schedule, and I, I probably should. Uh, that would probably help the views a little bit because I've been very inconsistent. Um, but I try to go live every day, uh, roughly around roughly around five, uh, five o'clock, uh, mm -hmm. four or five o'clock in the afternoon, Eastern Standard Time, until about eight, eight or nine. Um, it just really depends on the day. Um, I, I'm going to try to get back to streaming every day, um, every day of the week, uh, around that time. So, I mean, but I do send out my blast before I go live. And if I'm not going to go live, I will at least send out a blast saying, Hey, I'm not going to go live. Perfect. Well, then on that note, everyone, uh, if you have enjoyed this conversation, if you want to see the guitar return, Go pay him a visit and harass him, all right? Because we need that. We like that. We need that. Uh, Splendid Daddy, the one of, I'm going to put you in the top, probably top three names and name reasons that I've seen. I like that. That's really creative. That's funny. Uh, <laughs> please drop this gentleman a favor if you've enjoyed this conversation. It's been great getting to know you, man. Thank you so much for, for coming on today. Thank you for having me, actually. Have a good yeah. one. Yeah, definitely. I'll see you soon, man. Thank you. Um, all right. Hey, so playlist is in one week. Special thank you to all the guests tonight. Uh, Mr. Chaw, Mr. Uh, Miss Devin, not Mr. Come on, Chris, Miss Devin, six foot six in the house. That's right. During these interviews, I don't, I don't uh, inter uh, interact with the live stream. But Christian uh, Chaw from 104, all those Detroit stations, uh, Montreal coming in. Devin with her uh, travels, an interesting story, and and our new guitar friend who uh, is in the Navy. So we've had a great spread of talent, interests, passions, and people. I hope you all have enjoyed these conversations. If you'd like to see some more of this type of content, my name's Chris Casper, spelled this way here. You can find me on Instagram. Love your messages if you ever want to say hi or something like that. Or if you want to catch a stream that's not suited up with Chris. We do uh, we do other things. Love to see you on an off day that's not a Wednesday. Um, much love to each of you. I look forward to seeing you, Chris, one last time say Playlist 2020 is next week. Wizard knows. Wizard knows the excitement. If you have any flexibility to make it to Playlist or you've been on the fence, you're like, I think I could swing it, but I just don't know if it's worth it. Playlist 2020, or Playlist 2019 was life-changing. One of the most exciting experiences and things that I had been a part of that I didn't even know would be that exciting. And it was, I met so many friends, new people that have lasted over this past year. And I can't wait to do it all over again. Um, thank you so much, everyone. And uh, I can't wait to see you next time. All right. My name's Chris Casper. Thanks for joining us. Suited up and I will see you next time. All right. Bye. Oh yeah. To the gifters too. Fly Girl, Miami, as well as Isabella. Yeah, Isabella, Isabella, right. Fly Girl, Miami, Isabella. Special thank you to those top three right there. Make sure you show them a little bit of love too. Yeah, yeah? Okay. Check you guys next time. Bye.